better get me back, as it'll be dark soon, and they mostly come at night. Mostly. Welcome to Mostly Horror Movie Night. Mostly. <laughs> I'm Steve. And I'm Sean. How's it going, Sean? It's going. Uh, I, you know, just had a, a panic attack today. Um, you know, yeah. that's what this, this is, this is for that, right? Yeah. It's a positive panic attack. Yeah. I, uh, cause we just got to talk to one of my absolute icons. Um, and you saw me, we talked before the interview and I was geeking. Um, yep. if you want to tell them who we talked to. Yeah. We talked to Tim Jacobus. Tim Jacobus ah! is the, <laughs> uh, Tim, um, is known for the iconic goosebumps covers the the original 63 and, and some more after that um we did 61 of the 63 ended up doing the other two um ended up redoing those as well um but tim made i mean the images of goosebumps that you all know and love tim created um mm -hmm. and he is an artist uh he's he's wonderful to talk to yeah very funny very knowledgeable very um you know him talking about his process is inspiring and he's very thoughtful uh and has a lot of has a lot of thought behind what he does which was great to hear so a hundred percent it's it's um you can hear me because i've been i mean we're, we're both fans i'm a uh, a diehard and have been a fan mm -hmm. since i was a kid and you can kind of hear me geek out throughout the uh the episode and it's uh yeah it's crazy i always thought that if i was ever going to meet him it would be at a convention and it would be a quick hey can you sign this big fan i didn't know that i would be speaking with him for what we talked with him for like an hour and a half yeah we have a good uh, solid conversation yeah and like you said he's, he's such a cool guy such a nice guy um down to the covid donation stuff that he's doing yeah. um which listen to the episode and you guys will hear us go into depth about that um i won't break it down now you can hear it in a bit yep but, no, yeah. I agree. Um, well, yeah, like like Sean said, we have uh, about an hour and a half long conversation with him, um, so we don't want to drag on too long for this beginning. Um, but we definitely just want to, you know, throw out uh, this is episode six if you're listening right now. So thank you guys for listening to all of our episodes. Um, if you're listening, um, like we've said before, we want to do some more horror stories. So you know, if you remember the first time that you ever watched a horror movie. Uh, you want to tell us about it, send us an email to mostly horror movie night at gmail.com. Um, because we'll we'll read it off, we'll give you some credit and talk about you know whatever movie was your first movie and chat about that for a little bit at the intro of our next episode. Um, yeah, we please do awesome, that, guys. Yeah, it'll be really fun. Um, we have some awesome episodes lined up, uh, some really cool guests from some kind of strange parts of the horror horror verse, mm -hmm. uh, if I if I can call it that. So um, a lot of people that I don't think you would normally hear on like a horror podcast. So I'm super, yeah. super stoked about that. Um, 100%. All right, Sean, uh, last thoughts on the interview before people listen to it? Um, I only peed a little bit and he didn't know. So <laughs> I was very excited and nobody, nobody knew, you know, nobody knew. Nobody Just knew. me. Yeah. Amazing. So. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we will swing over to the interview with Tim Jacobus. Hope you guys enjoy again. Thank you for listening. All right, we are here with Tim Jacobus. Uh, you know Tim from the original Goosebumps covers. Uh, he originally did the first or or 61 of 63 covers, but I think since then you've done the other two, right? Correct. Awesome, awesome. Um, and you've also done some other stuff for Goosebumps uh, since then, because that obviously has been a little while uh, since you started. Um, let, let's talk about when you started. So you started working uh, and doing the Goosebumps covers in what, 1991? Yeah, 91 was uh, the, the first cover, Welcome to Dead House. Um, I had been working with Scholastic a couple of years before that, uh, doing uh, a, a wide array of work. And um, I just happened to be standing in the right place at the right time when the Goosebumps series came along. I, you know, I had kind of um, uh, proven myself responsible. You know, give me a job. I'll get it done when you ask me to get it done. The quality will be consistent. You know, I, I don't get, you know, uh, get bogged down in, oh, I wasn't in the mood or I'm in my blue period and I can't uh, get this together. You know, I just 
they they were that I, and I think that's why they they considered me because you know in a series you it, it's more important than ever to be on time because one job affects the next affects the next the affects the next yeah the consistency factor definitely i mean especially and yeah. if once you fall behind you're behind and yeah. if you really fall behind now you're you know there's money involved in delivery trucks and you know it's a it's a it's a it's a it, it's more of an issue than if we're doing a one off and you hire me to do your your album cover and I delay your album by a week. Well, yeah, that's probably I mean, that's a big deal to you. But in overall, you'll make up that time somehow. But in that, you know, once a month delivery thing, you, you got to make it happen. Yeah, that, yeah. that definitely makes sense. I was about to say your process must have been so crazy, um, just like time management and stuff like that must have just been wild to to kick stuff out that that fast, especially yeah. with the level of detail. So luckily, this didn't happen in my first year in business. Um, you know, I had been doing it, you know, from the time I got out of art school until, you know, uh, I got going. So, you know, I had, you know, I had 10 I guess better than 10 years under my belt. So, you know, I had made a lot of my mistakes earlier on and just knew what needed to be, you know, what needed to be done. Also, in order to make money as an illustrator then or now, you got to put out a lot of product. Nobody's paying you millions of dollars to, to, to produce nice artwork. And uh, the idea was be efficient, get it done, get to the next one, get that one done and try to keep them lined up. And at the time when Goosebumps came around, I had a, a, a rep and he did all the legwork. So he was the one landing the jobs. He was the one lining them up and I could concentrate on just sitting there and, and getting the work done. So by the time Goosebumps rolled around, I had somewhat of a, you know, I had a system that, that worked. Right. Right. Can we actually, um, that's that's like super interesting to me because I, as an artist, I, you you mentioned kind of pushing through and you just did the work regardless of your mood and that sort of funk and stuff. Uh, I want to explore your your process in general um, a little bit, but uh, how like did you have an approach to sort of getting yourself through those tough days other than just sheer willpower or like how did you um like how how did it feel? Did, was there ever a time where you were you know, kicking out a piece that maybe you weren't that stoked on or that you didn't love that much? Yeah, you're going to get that. That's a, that's an occupational hazard. You know, yeah. there's going to be pieces that, you know, just because if they're meeting, if they're meeting up to your expectations, then I think you're doing something wrong. I think every piece, at least for me, there's a, there's a, there's a level of, okay, that's professional, but there's also that little bit of disappointment going, you know, if I had a little more time or if I had planned something a little bit different there, if that was moved more to the left, you know, it could be, it could be better. It could be better. So you're always going to fight the, it could be better. But the thing that I think helped me the most, once I got it in my head that don't get hung up on that, there's another one coming you can take care of it there, you know, keep that thing in the back of your head. What did you just learn here? Let's, let's put that in the toolbox and remember that one and let's not make the same mistake twice. So yeah. that kind of attitude gets you just to keep moving forward. Yeah. And you also have to do a lot of, you know, real common sense stuff. So it's always, uh, you know, we all have the ability to push through and, work all night to get that job done, you know, or, you know, really, you know, string on those real long days and, and get something done. Well, that's great, but those have real diminishing returns and there's a price to be paid for those. So if you do an all nighter somewhere two days later, you're going to be a mess and you're going to lose a whole nother day's worth of work. So the idea of being, you know, being consistent in your work day, keeping your work day under control, getting a decent amount of sleep, I'm not telling you have to, you know, get 10 hours of sleep, but you need to make sleep an important thing. And yeah. also 
because the job is this, and this is, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm saying all this shit out loud because it's, I have to keep telling myself these (laughs) these stories over and over again. I sit here so much and I sit still because that's the discipline. The discipline is to sit here and get the work done, but it's also not good for you, you know, to sit and sit and sit and sit. So you got to then go, all right, no matter what, no matter what the pending deadline is, I got to get up. I got to go, you know, I got to go, get a little workout in. I got to keep moving because then that'll enable me to sit here tomorrow and keep the, keep the, keep the, the, this, the, the the machinery working. Right. um, Yeah. It's, I've compared the art business to um, the way you would uh, compare to, if you were, uh, you know, if you're an athlete and, you know, we're going to use basketball as the as the example. You got to love the baseline part of basketball, standing there in front of the hoop, shooting the ball and finding that, you know, that thing that you just go, that's fun. I really like that. I want to do that over and over again and going out and just practicing those rudiments and, and getting it done. So I'm sure that every professional basketball player near the end of the season cannot stand playing basketball. They want to do anything else other than yeah. playing basketball. And I get that too here, you know, like anything other than this, anything, anything, but you, you know, that it's going to come to an end. There'll be a, a, a break. You got to get your head out of it for a while, but just always remember that that part of it that you still like is always there. Otherwise you're in the wrong job. You yeah. should be doing something else. If there isn't that fun while you're doing that or that little thrill, my thrill in my in my cycle of art is about three quarters of the way through the job because I, you know, I get my idea down and there's usually a jag right there at the beginning because it's, you know, that's that's something new. And you, you see it in its rough form and you're going, oh yeah, that 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 has potential. Then you actually get to the final art and you're about three quarters of the way through. You've got everything rolling along. And then it's, I know how this is going to come out. And it starts to starts to trail off a little bit about, okay, well, hurry up. Let's get it done. I, I know where we're going with this. You know, don't, you know, make sure you get all those details in it because that's, you know, that's, that's where, you know, that's what keeps the people coming back. And uh, so, yeah, it's an arc. And every job has kind of a similar arc to it. Some are tougher than others. Some I don't like, you know, at the beginning, because you'll do a number of jobs that aren't your concept. These are someone else's concept. And you you go, okay, well, it's not quite the way I would do it. Um, and you fight through those jobs because it's not instinctually what you are going to do. But there's tons to be learned there. And what I found is probably 70% of the time, it is a good idea. I'm just not comfortable with it. And I just got to figure it out and get it done. So uh, yeah, you, you, you just get used to that, that cycle and yeah. looking for that part that you like. Absolutely. So you, with Goosebumps in particular, you had a pretty good, um, you know, range of free freedom to be able to do, you know, I, can you describe? I, I like I said, I've I've personally listened to some podcasts that you've been on talking about the the way that you contacted or not contacted, but the way that you would go about creating covers. Can you kind of talk a little bit about the freedom that you were given and kind of how um, you know they would tell you this is what we would like you to draw for this cover? Sure. So I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of capitalize on that that phrase freedom uh, mm-hmm. because. Uh, the Goosebumps series was incredibly unique for me, and it was incredibly unique, I think, in general. Uh, I, I, like I said, did lots of books before Goosebumps, done lots of books after Goosebumps. And while we were in it, uh, I had a great deal of say in the matter, and we didn't spend a lot of time reworking ideas and, uh, you know, overthinking anything. And I think in retrospect, you know, just looking back on it, I think it had a lot to do with when the series started, um, there wasn't high expectations that it was going to 
take off or that it would even go anywhere. Um, the the series it was the first series uh, that was horror based that was directed at that age group. At the time, there was a, a basically a non-existent boy market uh, in that in that group. Boys didn't read books. You know, they you could get them to read a comic book. You could get them to do a couple other things, or they just didn't read in general. And teachers complained about it a, a, a <laughs> lot. So when the, the the Goosebumps series came out, it was geared towards girls. And, um, and, and then again, I was told at the beginning, they're like, look, we're not so sure about this. Um, we actually don't have a big budget for it. So I know we paid you X on the last job. We're going to be paying you a little less than X, but you know, we understand if you don't want to do that and you know, don't worry if this doesn't go anywhere, you know, we promise you we'll get you on a, a good series. So um, I looked at the, you know, the, the, the first manuscript, which was Welcome to Dead House. And I just went, oh, this is, this is cool. I, you know, sure. I want in. I, I don't care. You know, I'm, this is, and again, a job on the table is a job on the table. I don't really care what you're paying. I, you know, take, take it, you know, take it. It's here. Don't wait right. for the other good one that might come along. Always take the job that's there. So because I think they had low expectations, everybody wasn't so hopped up to give it their, you know, 2000% effort and go team, you know. And so at the beginning, everybody was just happy we were getting it done. And, you know, there was, I worked with an art director and she was great and they gave me their, you know, their two cents worth and we got along well, but nobody harped on anything. It was basically we would get a partial uh, from uh, Bob Stein. He was writing the book at the same time I was doing the cover. So in the case of Welcome to Dead House, that was pretty far along, if I remember right. It, uh, it might have even been a full manuscript. But after that, the amount that I got got smaller and smaller and smaller until it was literally I got a couple sentences. You know, this one's about a ghost and it's at a lake. How about it? <laughs> Which, uh, you know, from from my point of view, that was that was better because yeah. if you give me details, then I have to put those details in, and I'm constantly keeping them in the back of my mind. If you kind of throw it out there, that gives me a lot of room to run with the ball. So, uh, again, low expectations at the beginning. I'm getting the the, the manuscript. I put together three sketches. I send them over and they pick one 99% of the time. They just went, yeah, number two, that's the one I go to the final art. I turn it in. They go, yeah. Okay. Here's the next manuscript. I mean, it was literally like that. And that anybody who's done a book cover knows that is not the way the business runs. Everybody's got something to say. There's a lot of changes that are made at every step along the way. So, this is going on for the first half a dozen books, you know, and the sales of Goosebumps at the beginning wasn't all that great. And there was actually uh, conversations about maybe we wrap this thing up. It's not really taking off. And luckily, all you guys, when you were growing up, you started to just talk to one another because, again, back then, no social media to be to, to speak of. And you're all just word of mouth going, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. They're also being brought in uh, through the Scholastic Book Fair. So this book is showing up that's, you know, it's kind of different looking. So all of a sudden it took off. I mean, and it went from, you know, being canceled to just shooting like a rocket. Now, I'm I don't know who was in charge and who made all the decisions at Scholastic, but somebody made the decision, at least for my neck of the woods, was don't anybody touch this. You know, this is working perfect. Let's not mess with it. Let's not do anything. These are, you know, these are great numbers. Don't, you know, just keep doing the same thing. So again, Nobody bothered me. Nobody questioned me. Um, 
the the cycle, the tight cycle of having a book come out every month had was helpful because we didn't have a lot of time to fool around. But um, yeah, the freedom of doing what I wanted uh, was incredible. And um, the thing that we've talked about in later years, uh, me and Bob Stein, is how lucky we got. And it was luck that my art lined up with his stories because I didn't know enough about the stories to really base a lot of what I was doing and they just would line up and it was a, you know, it just worked real well. You know, I'm sure, you know, he has stories where there was a couple of clunkers, but uh, they always made him rewrite the book and I didn't have to repaint anything. So. <laughs> That's, a That's so funny. Um, yeah. I, wow. There was so much, uh, uh, yeah, I so talk much. A lot. no, 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 you're, I, I do the exact same thing. Um, I, so I'm I'm curious uh, then because you you were originally talking uh, about sometimes having to do ideas that weren't your own. Once things really took off, like they just gave you for like they weren't saying we're thinking this for a cover. Can you play with this? They really just gave you. Oh yeah, no, like, I yeah. never got a here's my sketch. Good <laughs> for this one. I, there were verbal yeah. conversations where they're like, yeah. and they didn't give us much here. They're you know. It's, you know, camp counselor at a lake, uh, you know, I guess, you know, make sure you put in some cabins and, you know, like it was so non, you know, or, or hey, you remember that sketch you did for that book two books ago that we didn't use, you know, maybe we, there's something in there we could leverage, but nothing like, hey, here's a little thumbnail that I did. Can you, you know, can you do this? Yeah. So, yeah. No, I didn't get any of that. Good, good. Um, I'm really curious about, cause obviously you, like you said, you were working, you know, 10 years before, uh, professionally. Um, and oh, I'd like, that's a, that might be a stretch professionally might be a stretch. Oh. I was working. So, yeah, okay. you yeah. know, <laughs> I, I still might not call myself a professional, but a hundred percent professionals <laughs> getting paid to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there was enough people, right. There, there was art and then there was sometimes money Let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fair okay well so you you clearly were you know figuring out what your process was how you went about stuff i've looked through you know a handful of of your other pieces and while i can tell like it's all you clearly have like a unique voice um goosebumps is so much so a like a sub genre it seems how long in that process, did it take for you to really figure out that style? I'm talking everything from, you know, your forced perspective that you have, which is crazy, by the way, I can't understand it. I, just, I don't get how you do what you do to your color palettes. Um, and, you know, because you have like your your designs are pretty stylized, but realistic at the same time. And your renderings are very like exaggerated, but realistic. It, it almost feels surreal, your art. Um, I guess it is. And yeah, I'm just curious how you kind of reached that uh, for Goosebumps and, and creating that very cohesive look amongst the series. Um, it took, a, it didn't take long. So what was great about it, it was, um, so, you know, uh, Welcome to Dead House was a pretty straightforward horror story. That one's got a little edge to it. It maybe a little edgier than a lot of the other books. And okay, you know, I, I know how to do the haunted house. And uh, it wasn't until I got um, uh, I'm going to draw a blank here. The family at the cookout. Um, uh, safe safe and die. Die. Yeah. Um, where I went, oh, I get it. You know, there's we're trying to be tongue in cheek here. This is, there's a little humor here. We got room to have some fun with this. So I realized early on that, again, you could be a little exaggerated or maybe even a little silly or whatever to, to, to push that forward, push that idea forward. So that was a huge, you know, that was, that was one where I went, Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. The, uh, the actual, color scenario that happened early on because uh i was doing uh, another series with scholastic uh and they, the series not a series it was a style of book they were called women in jeopardy 
And it was always kind of the same story, you know, some mom, you know, in her town stumbles onto something and she ends up, you know, solving the big mystery murder uh, without the helps of the police. And, you know, so there was this whole genre of women figuring out crimes. And we did a lot of um, uh, buildings. So there would be, you know, the garage with, you know, the the shoe in the driveway. So you'd be doing that worm's eye view, force perspective, so you could see both. And there'd be the tenement building with the baby doll in the gutter. Like it was, you know, I did all different kinds of buildings. So when Welcome to Dead House came along, they were like, yeah, let's, you know, let's, let's go with something kind of along, you know, what you were kind of doing, but just, you know, exaggerated. And so like, all right, well, the thing that I can exaggerate is, is the color. And again, color theory is something that if you went to art school, they, you, you know what it's all about and they teach you all the split triads and all that stuff. And I always had fun with that in art school, uh, you know, cause you would pick three of the most, you know, random colors and, you know, as long as this was, that mathematically correct thing. And they would say, that's going to work. And I would always go, all right, give me those three. There is no way they're going to work. And then you put them together and go, well, son of a bitch, let's go. <laughs> that works. So um, I did book number one and another artist named Jim Thiessen did book number two, which is stay out of the basement. And if you look at the coloration on stay out of the, by the way, great artist, you know, uh, they had to pick one of us and mm -hmm one of the contributing factors was my use of color. There was a big fear that these books would be too scary for kids. And they felt that the color palette, you know, again, it's way less scary than if you do the muted colors uh, that are more realistic looking and not the clown show that, uh, you know, I decided to, to come up with. So uh, again, once I started down that road, then it's like, all right, you know, here we are in book six, can't repeat. Well, what's, you know, what haven't we done yet? So take out the, you know, the old color cops and go, all right, well, let's try this one and see where it goes. And it literally became a cycle of, you know, okay, what haven't we tried or where's the, let's make that color dominant. If we've used these three colors, don't use the purple as the main color, use the green as the main color and see what we can get. So there was, I, you know, I did a, a mini painting for every Goosebumps cover, uh, six by six. I didn't spend more than two hours on it, but it was before I'm painting 20 by 20 and committing to these crazy colors. I'm going to do this quick thing and go, does that work? And I made all my mistakes there. There was some I started with that were god awful, you know, like that wasn't working. And then come up with it and go, all right, yeah, that's going to fly. Keep that little painting, keep it by the, you know, keep matching up my colors as I'm moving forward and roll with that. Um, what was then fun was the book designers were now every month are getting these crazy color palettes and they were going, wow we can do the same thing with the books themselves. So the background color and the Goosebumps logo and all the rest of the parts of the book, they're lifting colors from my image or adding another color scheme to it. So every Goosebumps book, when it's laid side by side, has its own crazy color palette. And again, that just became a, a hallmark thing to the, to the uh, a hallmark uh, uh, identifier. Yeah. Then you brought up the force perspective, and that was something that I always liked to, to play with, and you mm -hmm. don't really have a lot of opportunities to do it. Like I said, I did that uh, that women series where I come, you know, worm's eye view, and I could force up the perspective to the building, but I never had to do, you know, got the opportunity to do the MC Escher, you know, bend yeah. the arc all the way around the corner. Yeah. And then when you do that, you'll see in a, a, a ton of the Goosebumps book, I got either tile ceilings or tile floors, because if you're going to force that perspective, it's great to put those gradients in there so that the viewer's eye goes, oh, I get it where we're going. Because if it yeah. was plain, you'd go, what's with the twisty ceiling? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Right. So, uh, again, that goes back to the 
perspective classes that were forced on me in art school. You know, we had some people with strong architecture backgrounds who taught us. And uh, yeah, so once you know what the rule is, then you know how to break the rule. Yeah. And yeah. Avoid straight edges. That's the whole thing. No. <laughs> that's awesome. One, one quick thing that I want to pull out of what you said. For the normal person that's listening to this in the year 2021, <laughs> you're you're talking about painting a 20 by 20 image as the final representation of the cover. Yes. Like that's it's so far. I mean, I know there's still people that 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 make physical things <laughs> mm-hmm. now. You know what I mean? Like you know, Sean. You know, I, I know you're a mixture of both mm-hmm. digital and physical. Um, it's so it's so crazy to hear about you making this huge thing that you're then going to send to the the you know people yeah, at the publishing company. Yeah, and yeah, it it does seem it 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 makes it fun because it almost the whole thing seems like a whole fantasy world. Like nothing's the same was was the same. I mean, yeah. I faxed sketches over. Nobody <laughs> yeah. did anything. I didn't email anybody. Right. I, you know, you had to get That's them cool. on the phone when they weren't in a meeting and. Uh, Yes. Yeah, so the funny thing was when I'm in art school, we're learning about all the famous illustrators from the past. And uh, the in Pennsylvania, um, there's a, a family called the Wyatts. They're very famous. Uh, the, the, the son became the most famous, Andrew Wyatt. But uh, uh, shoot, I'm going to draw. He's got two initials, MC Wyatt, MC Wyatt was his dad or his granddad. And he was like the father of American illustration. And we went to his his museum because it was close to where I live, you know, a couple hour ride. And the size of the paintings he painting, he painted were nuts. You know, these were, you know, six feet tall, 10 feet tall, just, you know, he had to walk up to paint them and then walk back. And they sh- they took you into what was his studio, and there was a path worn in the the wood floor from him walking up and walking back and walking wow. up and walking back. So my painting today, I know it does seem insane that they were twenty inches by twenty inches to be on a a small book cover, but I'm looking at him going, man, I'm I'm you know I'm shit. Look at That's you funny. know, <laughs> and, and he's doing those you know uh, you know these giant. <laughs> giant giant so uh anyway yeah. um yeah it was uh so yeah everything's uh was uh, tangible everything was traditional it was acrylic paints uh i used airbrush to uh you know get that blended look that made it, you know, that smooth plastic look that it had i had been doing airbrush for years prior to that um the painting, you know, cars, motorcycle tanks, anything to make a box. Nice. Yeah. And, um, you know, we just got, got proficient with it. And uh, it turned out to be a, an excellent tool while I was doing traditional illustration. So, so not to jump, I know we want to talk about post goosebump stuff in a little bit, but are you still using the same method? Do you go digital at all now or, or how, yeah. how are you working? So, um, so around right around the time that the Goosebumps series ended, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just throw some numbers out, and I'm sure I can be proved wrong. <laughs> around 2003, um, you know, we were Goosebumps was a, a fading thing for me. There was a couple of things that were going on, but for the most part, I was doing other things. But the business, the publishing business, had determined a few years before that we're going digital, we're going to be 100% digital. And if you would like to continue in this business, you're going to have to get on board with this. And there were a lot of uh, illustrators that I knew and worked with who, you know, who chose not to. And uh, so I bought a computer and, you know, I used it, but I didn't use it for my jobs at the beginning. I was just trying to teach myself. And it was, you know, it was horrible. I, you know, there was nothing I liked about it. I, you know, again, you got to remember the computers in 2003 are not, the, yeah. aren't the beauties that I got lined around me now. And there was, you know, right now there's nothing but power and nothing but storage space. And back then you were, you know, you died 
you know, by every meg that you used. And um, it was very frustrating. And, uh, you know, not enough to where I thought I was ever going to quit, but it was a huge step backwards where I had, like I said, I had been doing this system for a while and I knew exactly how long things would take. And, you know, I was, I was good at what I was doing. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, all that stuff goes away. Here you go. You got a computer and you got, you know, you got a, a Wacom tablet and a, and a pen that doesn't feel like anything you've ever used before and to have at it and make it work. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I, and then you make, then you start making all those rookie mistakes and I'm going, God, you know, I've been doing this for so long. I used to be yesterday. I was good. And <laughs> today I suck. I suck. So, uh, it took a couple of years of doing it on the side. Then you start to, it starts to click and you go, Oh, you know, oh, holy shit, there's there's a lot going on in here. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things going on in here that I can't do traditionally. And I got to figure out, you know, I got to figure out how to bring these skills in that I have and get this tool to work for me. And then it went from being a, a huge pain in the ass to being an obsession. And, uh, you know, uh, the digital world has been great. Uh, nine uh, it's not even close it's you know any um uh, job that is for a project other than somebody hanging the art on their wall is done digital yeah, uh, yeah. nobody wants anything other than that nobody knows even how to get a, a piece of artwork photographed anymore and get it back <laughs> into production so yeah. uh yeah the digital world is has been great um uh, i use it nearly exclu exclusively. I try to do a lot of, in the early steps of a job, I'm still, I still have a, a, a drawing pad and a pencil and I'm drawing traditionally. And then I'll scan those pencils in and then I'll start doing my rendering digitally after, you know, so there's a, um, there's a traditional feel still to the stuff that I'm working on. Yeah. And you're still, are you still able to, sorry to keep building, but are you able to replicate or at least get close to with, with certain brushes and that sort of stuff, you know? With, yeah. So with that was a, now? that was a huge thing where I didn't want to tell anybody in the business world that I could do digital art until I could, in my mind, be duplicating my style, yeah. you know, the stuff that had brought me, you know, where they recognize my stuff. I got to be able to do that. And then the, the question has to be, wow, that's nice. Is that traditional or is that digital? Yeah. I need that question to be asked. And then I know I'm there. Yeah. So no, that was a, that's why it took as long as it did for me to get out there is I really wanted it to be, you know, indistinguishable. Yeah. You know, if you know, uh, traditional art and digital art, you know, you, you can spot it but I want you to have to take that second look. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, I was going to say it's, it's really hard. Cause I remember, you know, uh, I, I, I think I mentioned it a little bit before the interview. Um, but I was, I was a huge fan of goosebumps as a kid and I would stare at your covers. Um, I specifically remember being in second grade and my library had a whole like row, like a whole shelf of a bunch of Goosebump books. It wasn't all of them, but it was a lot of them. And I would just go and stare at them. And I remember like the progress of seeing like when the new series came out, like when they started doing the uh, choose your own adventures and right. stuff. Yeah. And I remember seeing just in general, not just in Goosebumps, but digital art become more of a thing. And it was cool, but I, I didn't know how to articulate it at the time, but I didn't understand why there wasn't it didn't feel the same and why there wasn't that charm. Um, and then now, like as an artist, I, I understand it's, it's hard to figure out how to translate your, you know, your hand style over to digital and, and especially with your stuff, like it, that must've been a journey. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, but it came at the right time. So you got to remember, so I'm, I'm, uh, you know, 10 years before I get goosebumps, I'm 10 years, 10 years in goosebumps. And so now I've been kind of doing this stuff for 20 years. I, you know, there wasn't a lot of new breakthroughs happening every day. 
So the idea that they forced me at that point in my career to figure out something new was probably a godsend. It probably, you know, saved me from losing my mind because I had something else to dive back into and go, all right, new challenges. This is, I got to figure this whole thing out. And, you know, then what's, I mean, I'm not telling you guys anything or anybody who's listening. It's incredible how the digital world is just unfolding in front of us and stuff is happening at lightning speed and stuff that, you know, you know, I have, I I talk to high school kids and they're going, Oh, what do you, you know, what's a good field to get into in the art field? And I go, don't even think like that because by the time you get out there, there may be something brand new that we all never heard of. And that could be the next coolest thing. So just get your, you know, get your basic skills down and expose yourself to lots of different media and medium and find what you like. And, you know, the the rest of it's going to fall into place because, yeah, five years from now, we're going to all be laughing and going, ah, Photoshop shit. Holy right. I can't believe anybody (laughs) did that. Yeah. If you're 100%. not doing virtual reality artwork, then you're not doing yeah. <laughs> no, you're not doing you have our goggles on. And, yeah, exactly. You have to paint a physical painting in the yeah. virtual world. It's already happening. It's already yeah. happening. Oh, I'm sure. No, I'm sure yeah. it would be, and I I could see the appeal. It would be great. Yeah. 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 Um. So. So talking about you know you you have jumped from from the beginning to to near the end of Goosebumps. Can you talk about? So obviously you've done more of Goosebumps since the original like set Um, and you've worked on, you know, the 2000, the Goosebumps 2000s. And um, did you do some Fear Street stuff at all? No, no, that was a different group of people. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, So can you talk about the, you know, the original first 63, how did you find out that that was ending kind of like what, you know, who like told you about that, that like, Hey, this is, this is done. So that, uh, that ending wasn't very dramatic. They, uh, there was, you know, talk and they said, okay. Um, so I, 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 I was usually uh, six months ahead of what you guys had on the shelf. So what you were experiencing on the shelf, um, you know, five to six books, or I'm at the sketch stage of book six. I've seen the manuscript. I'm getting started. So uh, I knew that the end was coming, but they also said, early on, don't worry, you know, we're going to do another series. And the idea between the old series and the new series is we're going to try to make these stories, you know, Bob's going to write edgier stories and we're going to let you do some edgier stuff in the, in the covers. So I was like, fantastic. And again, you start doing that stuff for so long and you think, oh, well, this is going to last forever. And, uh, you know, nothing lasts forever, but you don't, you know, you don't think of it that way. So the the second series was, again, it was nice. It was a little bit different. We went from the square format to the full, uh, you know, uh, four by seven, seven by four, however you want to say it, format. Um, uh, Again, I got to do a little more edgy stuff. Um, One particular cover, the Graveyard Ghouls. Uh, his eye is literally hanging out of the socket. There is no way I would have got away with something like that in the original. Yeah. Series. So yeah, it was that was fun. The 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 big surprise came um, while working on the 2000 series, where I was on again not good with my numbers. I'm the, I'm on book 26. Uh, I think it was called something like the Incredible Shrinking Fifth Grader. I had the art done. Um, I get a call and they said, yeah, I know you're almost done with the art, but um, don't bother shipping it to us. We're going to pay you, you know, don't worry, we're going to pay you, but uh, that's it. You know, that's, that's the last one. Uh, You know, that's the end of goosebumps. So I got zero notice that time around, you know, there was none, there wasn't like, Oh, you know, three more, two more, one more. It was, I'm getting ready to turn something in and I'm looking for the next manuscript and it ended that quickly. So um, that was shocking because yeah. I, I have now then spent, like I said, a better part of 10 years as the Goosebumps guy. Goosebumps is over and now nobody, you know, all of a sudden 
you, you get, I'm in a hair band, you know, and uh, <laughs> nobody wants hair band music and I'm getting a little fat and I shouldn't be in my tights anymore. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's hard to, to get new work. So again, the, the luxury of, Oh, I've been kind of working on this digital stuff. I can come up with another look. Hopefully that's, you know, that will suit uh, some new clients and we'll try and rebuild this thing up from the ground. So yeah, it went from lots of work to very sporadic work uh, very quickly. So uh, again, nice cold shower. You just you go, oh my God, everything doesn't last forever. Mm-hmm. Good thing I'm not, you know, I don't live crazy or, you know, I, I don't own a Porsche, that's for sure. Uh, so, you know, you go, okay, this is just part of it. And, yeah. uh, you know, sharpen your skills and let's see what we can figure out here and then move on to the next thing. Yeah. that's It's so crazy. Not truly not to like kiss your ass or anything, but that's just wild to me. Hey, listen, <laughs> no one kisses my ass here. Day in and day out, no one does. So I'm, I'm going to let you go. And- <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I um i it's just crazy to me because yeah i i again i to geek out i like you were i had every book i joined the fan club small story um to go going back to second grade i um i remember like the first time i saw them and my second grade teacher wouldn't let us rent them from the library she thought they were too scary and i was like screw that and so i talked to my grandma into signing me up for like the fan club so i got every book sent to me for years yeah and i i have them all from my childhood like right now it's kind of you can't see it it's dark but like there's a shelf that is my goosebump shelf (laughs) i pulled a handful out for sake of conversation (laughs) but um but yeah it was i don't even remember where i'm going oh um you were just on such a, a different level than all of the art that I was seeing at that time. You were so different uh, that it's crazy to me that you weren't that the second that Goosebumps let you go, that other people weren't just like grabbing at you like that. No, again, no. that's yeah. just wild. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, you know, and I, I, I made the joke about the band, but you've seen it happen in music where there's there's a style and a group that's just killing it. And then the time passes. And if they don't change with the time, that, that thing's over. That, you know, it, it, it runs a cycle. So um, no, yeah. I, I appreciate all the nice things that you said. <laughs> the, 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 the part that I think is the, the most surprising part about this was, okay, you know, we, we got in on something back in the 90s that was – a little out in front of anything that had happened before and we were doing something a little bit different and you guys never saw anything like it. So you you were naturally gravitated to it. And we had the, again, the second luxury of being part of the scholastic family and that stuff just being pumped into the schools, you know, or you, you're joining this scholastic fan club or the, you know, like there was, they were getting the books to you, you could you could find them easily. You didn't have to search them out. But the amazing part of it is, here we are now, and we're still talking about it. Like yes. you're not you're not in second grade anymore, no. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure your grandmother doesn't have anything to do with what you do on your daily basis. So <laughs> the fact that it's still considered cool or something worth talking about is is just you know it's it's mind bending to me it's wonderful to have these conversations because this should have went you know aside with you know training wheels on your bike and you know a couple of the other things that you grew out of and mm-hmm. the fact that it's still cool is uh, you know I, i'm i'm as excited about you guys still liking it as uh, as you guys are so, so let's talk about the, the uh, for for lack of a better term, the iconic imagery because I think that that's that's one thing that you know Sean, being the Goosebump super fan, can tell you about every single book probably, <laughs> but most people when you're talking to them about Goosebumps, they're going to recognize the imagery, which is you know for for as great of a writer or for for the youth that, or you know whatever he's writing as Arl Stein is, you created these images that more or less represent the 
the really? titles of these books. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and that's huge, especially when you look at the Goosebumps series that was made, you know, in the 90s that's on Netflix now. When you look at the two Goosebumps movies that have come out, how do you feel about I, I feel like they're they're two separate things almost. You have the books and the meat, the meat and potatoes of what's created with the story. And then you have your image, which is a different representation, not a different representation, but an alternate, you know, representation that fits with the story. How do you feel about creating these images, you know, like the mask, like Slappy, like I think of like Shocker on Shock Street, the huge praying mantis, like, you know, how do you feel about seeing those images? represented in in new ways now and being like I created all of that you know imagery <laughs> uh I I don't really think that we I mean yes I do think that way you know in the big picture but it was the you know um you know it, it, the it's the story and the book together that makes the whole thing work you know I'm yeah. you know we're fishing. I'm the lure. I get you to walk over. And if I can get you to pick up that book, I know I got you. You, you know, I win. You picked it up. That thing's going to make it out of here. And you get sure. home. If those stories sucked, you're not coming back again. Yeah. So the stories were good. They were written in a way that hooked you. And my covers were there as a hook. So you finish that book and then it's like, oh, there's another one. But the beauty of it was it was never the same monster. It was never the same kid. It was never the same location. So it could be anything. And you figured that out real quick going, shit, the story could be about anything. I can't wait to see what's coming up next. And, and me neither. I, you know, I had the opportunity to paint just about every different thing that there was. Um, yeah. uh, the, you know, seeing it being remade is is super cool, especially in the movies, seeing a, you know, a, a character that's only supposed to be 2D, that stands still, that doesn't do anything, all of a sudden is animated and brought to life. Yeah, you got to love that. That's just, yeah. that's just, that's cool. That's, you know, never thought of it. Didn't cross my mind once that anybody's going to do anything like that. So uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, so you're using the term iconic. Oh, everybody knows who Slappy is. And, you know, it's in my head, it's still the same. Like he's still just the same character. You know, I, I did him a number of times, tried to, you know, find the, the parts about him that I liked. You know, I liked more of the, you know, like it still had to be a ventriloquist dummy. And, you know, he had his his weirdness to him. But, you know, I like the ones where you, you, Shocker on Shock Street or, you know, uh, Egg Monsters from Mars or, you know, any of the ones where it's like you got nothing to lean back on. You know, there's no there's no famous anything. You know, it's not like they asked yeah. me to do Frankenstein. I got to make my own stuff. Yeah. So a couple of those I I look back on and go, oh, I dig that. Yeah. Um. So a couple things, actually, because my brain <laughs> firing off of a million miles a second. Um. So first I want to say like, just to further his point, obviously you guys were like the perfect duo, I think for the series, yeah. just like you said, they were, they were separate entities, you know, but the like coexisting, they, they were definitely a pair. Um, and you're absolutely right. You, you, that metaphor you used about you being the lure and him sort of reeling, you know, like him being the guy on the, the other end. Uh, is perfect because that's exactly what happened. Your art is why I got into those books and then his writing is why I stayed. Um, I'm really curious about the movie thing, or I, I guess I want to point out first, uh, so you did see the Goosebump movie. Um, yeah, with, so like, both of them, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I, I thought it was really interesting when I watched it because they honestly used you, like your art, kind of more as an inspiration for the characters, even than they did some of his stories. Like I, I'm the kind of person that picks out inconsistencies, but like the giant praying mantis from Shocker on Shock Street in the movie, they had it like an actual bug. You know, I remember there was a part where bug juice came out, but in the story it was a robot. And when I was watching it, I was like, that's not right. But they were, they didn't, they knew that that wasn't, you know, they, they were more focused on your imagery than getting into those details. And stuff. they knew that Sean was the only person that was yeah, going to make that connection. Gonna, like Sean, <laughs> Sean's going to be the only one complaining. We'll get like an email from him. And no, um, cause I, I didn't like, it was still great. Um, but, ah, oh, dang, I totally had this other point. Um, 
I started. Oh, so, and, and then, and so yeah. Well, yeah, like you said, they leaned heavy into the imagery because, and there was a real reason behind it is because every Goosebumps story was its own entity. It was hard for them to go, oh, we're doing this book for the movie because then that isolates all the rest of them. So yeah. somebody finally got the idea and there were movies proposed like that over the years and somebody finally figured out, oh, let's do a different story that, you know, brings, you know, uh, Jack Black, R.L. Stein into the story and we create something out of it and making it its own thing. Yeah. And that was brilliant. You know, that was yeah. really brilliant. Uh, and then we all had the same discussion at the time where they set Jack Black as R.L. Stein. And I just remember shaking my head going, <laughs> oh, boy, you know, like, you know, like there was a huge I like Jack Black. I think he I like him on uh, on TV. I liked him in all the movies he did. It's just like I know who Bob Stein is. <laughs> this is this doesn't line up. And then I started to get that yeah. feeling, uh-oh, you know, Hollywood took this thing. Mm -hmm. I may want to just keep my head down and pretend I never worked on the series because I don't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And um, it, you know, it ended up being, you know, I went, I was, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, I, the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm just going, yeah, this is good. They, yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they made this thing good. Uh I know the second movie didn't get as much of a, uh, uh, as much attention, but I thought that one really had more of a goosebumps book quality to it because you're focused on kids. They're in a specific story, you know, yeah, Jack Black was there, but he was only there for a short period of time. And the encompassing story really had that goosebumps book role to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remembered what the other thing was. <laughs> uh, so you were talking about Shocker on Shock Street. I'm, if you remember much about the process of that one specifically, did is that one of the ones where he had to change some stuff based on your illustrations? Like, did you come up with the praying mantis, or was that in there and you picked up on? No, it? that was in there. Yeah, that okay. was, yeah, that that okay. was definitely in there. I, I don't know if it said praying mantis. I'd have to go back and you know and give that some thought. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, that I don't that I don't remember. Okay. Uh, but um, yeah, that's a you know uh, the one that he tells that is the famous story is say cheese and die. So we do this family of skeletons at a at a cookout, and you know it's it's all about this camera that you know can, I, I think it was see the future again. Don't mm -hmm. don't hold me to it. And it. so yeah. it gets done and they, you know, they always would show the artwork to, to RL and he remembers seeing it and going, you know, cool picture, but there's no skeleton, no family, no, this doesn't happen. This doesn't mm -hmm. happen anywhere in the story. And uh, they're going, well, figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> so he, if, if you go back and read the book, and and he always and he always likes to to tease me about it. He's like, yeah, they make me change. They didn't ask you to change the, the artwork. They made me change the story. And uh, he ended up writing in a dream sequence where the kid dreams about the family of Scott. Yeah, and that's how we forced that one on there. But for the most part, the uh, the art uh, lined up with the story. And yeah. and and Bob was nice enough to say that. Sometimes in the later, you know, in the later books, he would wait to see the art so that he could then lean into the art and, and you know, say, oh, purples and blues and, you know, like really start to draw out some of the, the details that were in the final art and get them more in, in embedded in the story. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so it, cool. It's so <laughs> like... I don't know if serendipitous is the word, but it's it's just so great how how well that came together. Just yeah. just on all it's, facets. It's a funny, you know, and it's funny because you know I, I I know I know Bob as well as I can know him. We hang out. We've done you know a number of things together. I you know gone out to eat with him. I he took me to Disneyland once for <laughs> a Goosebumps uh, thing. And we're not similar, you know, like we're, you know, we get along great and he's a, he's fun. He's funny. He's a super nice guy, but we're not, you know, like there's no 
there's no rational reason why we should be in sync. You know, it's yeah. not like, oh, you know, you're like my brother. It's yeah. not like that at all. And it just, you know, for whatever, for whatever reason or whatever was in the water, it, it, it lined up. That's amazing. That's, That's fantastic. It's so perfect. Um, so we, I, I'm, I'm sure we could chat about a million different things. Well, yeah. one thing I really, so in doing some research, um, your, this episode is going to be episode six. Um, and by, I think you were one of the first people that I've booked. We, there's a, a pretty new podcast. Like I said, we're really excited that we were able to get you on. And um, when I first started doing, well, we've only done this six times, you guys, uh, it seemed like you've been doing it a while. So hey, thank oh. you. Thank it's you. cool. It's cool that you had the uh, the NBA, the professional basketball um, story or like comparison earlier, because we interviewed for our last episode a professional, like an NBA player wow. about, who loves mm-hmm. horror movies. And I was like, damn, that's gonna roll perfectly into this. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to you for not not even yeah. knowing that and, for not saying know. baseball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but um, so what what I was saying when I when I first started doing some research, you know into into what you're currently doing because i know about goosebumps um i saw that you're doing something awesome related to covid and selling your posters um you know for the for the people that are listening um can you kind of talk about what you're doing because i think it's it's really important um and something that i want to obviously tell as many people about as possible so um as with everybody else uh when covid first rolled around we all were wondering what was going to happen next you know uh, from the extreme end of things of how bad will this be? And then to the, the the next stage was then, okay, it seems like, you know, the the threat is there, but it's not going to be like the, the plague. And, but then the financial thing, uh, you know, was the next big boogeyman. And, uh, you know, I was doing comic conventions and, uh, you know, I had some, uh, uh, music people who were uh, planning albums who pulled the plug on them. And I have a, I, I'm a art director at a, a small studio and we had clients that were, you know, again, rolling everything back. And it was like, Oh man, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I was lucky enough where, yeah, those things happened, but other things kind of fell into place and I never saw a break in my uh, you know, I saw a little dip, but I at no point ever was afraid of, you know, not paying my bills or not mm-hmm. having enough to eat or, you know, any of those things. And uh, you start to see, you know, either if you're watching TV or you're having conversations with people around, that wasn't the case with a lot of people. And the what struck me and still strikes me and it's you know it's one of those things where you just it makes you shake your head that we live in a country and that there are still people who have a hard time finding enough to eat where sadly me and a lot of other people my bigger problem is i have too much to eat and i'm always constantly trying to go oh God, I ate too much. I got to be careful. I gained some weight. You know, like my, you know, that that's my problem is I have too much food. And it really just caught me watching a couple of news reports where they're showing the people in the long lines and, you know, your heart breaks to not to know that you know, there's people who don't have enough to eat. And um, I decided that, yeah, um, it was a good time. I had been thinking about offering up the Goosebumps artist prints, but I just didn't want to just throw them out there just to throw them out there. So um, there is a food bank that is literally a half a mile from my house and it's for my town. And I was like, well, food banks there, you know, let's figure out a way to get some food and get it over to the food bank. So started selling Goosebumps posters you can get them in two sizes you can get the small nine by nine or an 18 by 18 which is kind of close to the original size of the the former art and um i sign them so a large poster is 25 dollars um 10 bucks of that 25 dollars goes directly to buying food um i don't go down the street and hand them a check 
what we do is I log on, I got an account at Walmart, I have Walmart deliver the exact amount of dollars in food to my house, my, fr my friend, my son and I load them into the back of the truck and uh, we drive it over there. So 100% of that money that you know, you've donated goes to food. There's no process, there's no, you know, there's no hidden fees, there's no anything. And it's been, it's been great. People have, you know, it surprisingly consistent. People keep coming. And I know there's a lot of you guys out there. Uh, I know yeah. we sold 350 million books and you guys are still out there and you're still uh, appreciating, uh, uh, you know, the Goosebumps series. So this was a way for me to leverage that and do something that, you know, made me feel better at the end of the day. Yeah. As much as I'd like to say, oh, it's so great. I, you know, I'm doing it for other people, which I am. Sadly, I'm doing it because it makes me feel like a, you know, it makes me feel better. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're making an impact. I mean, it's a hundred percent. You have a residual effect. And I, I, def, I saw the images of your truck load, you know, loaded up and it's not, it's not a small amount of food. I mean, it's yeah. So uh, yeah, that's funny because awesome. I, I and I made sure that every month that there's a delivery, uh, I take a picture of it before we go, so you can see that you know we 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 you know we really did do this. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm I'm placing an order now. It's that time of the month where we got to get that order in, and we deliver the food on the the, the try to get it there by the first of the month. And uh, it, it's been uh, yeah. At first, it started out. I'm like. Shh, I gotta, I gotta put my own money in this. I can't just go down to the food bank with eight dollars worth of yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so no, it's 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 better now. Uh, yeah, we we have a decent amount. And what's been nice is uh, at one point um, they they they're not they're not sure who I am down the street yet. And you know, I brought in a bunch of food, and they were going, "Oh, I'm so glad to see you." because we literally ran out of food. So even wow. here, you know, I live in a nice New Jersey neighborhood. This isn't, you know, uh, this is an, imp an impoverished area and, you know, it's, it's happening here as well. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That's, that's, uh, that's amazing. I mean, hopefully the people that are listening will, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to snag a poster when, when we're done with this conversation. I know Sean will as well. I'm about to or five place or six. a ridiculously big order <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have. I know Sean, Sean was looking at your sketches uh, a couple days ago because yeah. he, he was looking for, for some original sketches. And I was like, those aren't going to be on this site, Sean. Even not, then, not the even original. then. So cool. Um, um, yeah. So, okay. Well, let, let me touch on something else that yeah. you, you uh, either you were going to bring up or this is a good segue into it. Mm -hmm. So for a number of years, there's been talk about taking the Goosebumps art and putting it into a, a book. So I, it it's on my book. list of things to talk about. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, so, no, perfect. Yeah, we're, we're leveraging. We're leveraging. So <laughs> it, it goes along with the sketch, you know, the original sketches that, uh, that you were talking about. So it started, it stopped, it started, it stopped. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, it's not something that I'm doing. It's done by somebody else. They bought the rights from Scholastic. So I'm almost out of the picture. Um, early on, I did, you know, try to help and say, okay, uh, it, you, here's some scans of the artwork. So you have, you know, some of what you need, uh, but, you know, this is your project, you know, and uh, have at it. And then it stopped again and it looked like it was going to go away. And a close friend of mine, uh, called me up, you know, it's probably been about a year now and he's going, Hey, did you know that, uh, you know, dynamite books is going to be, you know, doing it. I was like, dude, that ain't happening. You know, like this thing has started and stopped a bunch of times. It's not happening. And he goes, well, they just called me to ask me to put this together. So he's a book designer. Nice. And I was like, Oh, I was like, hmm, can you make some money at it? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're going to pay me. And I was like, all right. <laughs> then if you're doing it, let's do it right. So I said, I have a ton of stuff here. It's all in, you know, it's, it's in folders. The folders aren't really in order. I got boxes and boxes. I saved everything. I said, if you're willing, 
I said, you got it, you know, and he spent literally hundreds and hundreds of hours going through all the files, pulling all the sketches out, scanning everything. So not only will it be, you know, it's a nice size uh, coffee table book and the finished art will be there, but you also get to see all the original sketches for each piece, the color comps and some, you know, he, 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 <laughs> He kept finding stuff and he's like, what, what's this? And I was like, I don't even remember doing that, but I, if it's in there, I did it. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, there's a, it's more than just a, a repackaging of the covers. Yeah. There's a, a lot of uh, uh, stuff that no one's ever seen before. Literally nobody other than me and some people who used to look, work at Scholastic many, many years ago. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So to that yeah, I was going to say, I see it's coming out April 20th. It's called Beware the Art of Goosebumps. So yeah. anyone yeah. listening that wants to check that out, it's going to be great. I remember seeing um, the publication Bloody Disgusting because they post a ton yeah. of this. They, they always post I, I love those guys over there. I don't know, you know, why, but they, they're they always so good to me. They Every time I do anything, I might, you know, they give me a nod and yeah. – uh, I don't know what I did for them, but I'm I'm glad they like me. Same yeah. same thing you did for us, man. Same, same thing, thing you did, did for everybody. Us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Um, all right. Well, um b- before we go too far, um I think this is a good enough time as any to do our our top 5s. Um we're we're lucky to have you be doing this with us cuz it's one thing to have, you know, four random dudes talking about their favorite goosebumps covers, but <laughs> to have Tim, Tim himself talk about it. Um, we're not going to hold you to them. So a month from now, I'm not going to be like, okay. Dude, you said right. this yeah. was your favorite. Um, so, so we, yeah. what's the, give me the structure. So, so we, we so we're going to do we drafted the last round and saving for the, 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 the clincher at the end, your all time <laughs> 100, like your star will be your last draft. Or no, so we go yeah. now. We're going top down. So number top one down. overall pick. <laughs> all right. all right. um, you know, wanted to get snagged. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's it's not necessarily, you know, it doesn't have to be I, I would say favorites. Um yeah, no, we can, I, we can I, go I, I'm gonna be just pulling them out of the ether. Pulling names up. <laughs> That's fine. Um but yeah, we'll just we'll just go in a circle. Here. It'll go you, <laughs> you, Sean, and then me just going in a circle. Um all right, go ahead with your number one overall pick me Tim. yeah yep. yeah Tim, right. you can go first yep so it's not one of the it's not one of the uh you know it's not one of the, the big 10 that you would normally you know go oh these are the top 10 goosebumps books everybody knows this this was one of the ones a little farther down the road it just it was one of the images that just what i like in the Goosebumps cover or in any of the art I do is if you can keep it simplistic and impactful. So, you know, it's not like there's 40 things in there. I like it when there's one thing in there and you can get it to work and it conveys all of it. You know, it's scary. It's mysterious. It's, there's also cool, you know, cool colors. And you also created some effect in there that really works for you. So Curse of Camp Cold Lake ah, is the one that really nice. works for me because yeah. it's the half a skeleton. It's in the water. The reflections in the water worked. You know, it was just right. And it was just one of those things where you're just going, if you don't make this water work, this whole thing is a piece of garbage. And uh, so, yeah, that's one that yeah. stands out. And it's also impactful. So even if you're looking at it from across the room, you can see what that thing is. Yep. yeah it's yeah, terrifying I agree. it's a good one it's uh yeah because it's just the head poking out right and right. the eyes yeah. follow Those you eyes that's are like yeah scared me man i it's <laughs> funny because uh that's a, a perfect example I, i've read them all but it's one of the ones where i i remember the imagery way more than i remember much of the story so now i think i'm gonna have to go back and reread that one but the oh, imagery is just burnt into my head that's what i'm saying i don't fully remember um i just remember the ghoul yeah. Um, right. because right. there's a few camp ones, so it's easy to kind of like, exactly. it kind of, I mean, it's been, you know, Come on. 27. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Sean, number one. Um, I just realized I wrote your name twice. Okay. So this is me. All right. So number one, 
Number one, I, this honestly took me, I had to think about this for hours before we even did this. <laughs> um, uh, but I have to go with uh, A Day at Horrorland. Um, it's, it, everything about it is so mysterious and the you're immediately hooked on this idea of a terrifying amusement park um, like immediately you're you have the big monster right in front but all even this is honestly almost more scary than the monster itself like there's just something so eerie about your placement of that there's nothing you know you, you didn't in the design itself put anything horrific into the amusement park you kept it mysterious and Ominous. i don't know and then the it's the color scheme so this is the funny part i won't lie to you tim I kind of steal from you all the time. I, I <laughs> all the time. Other people, you know, I, I, there's I did color theory. There's so yeah. many times where, yeah, because I I won't lie. Like I I definitely need to to exercise my color theory muscles. Um, but whenever I'm stuck, I will sometimes just like goosebumps. And one of my most reoccurring like color schemes is based off of this book. Um. It, and that's cool because, you know, you do, um, you know, you're trying to do something that's frightening. Pink is generally not a color you're rolling with as a, yeah. as a possible color in the palette. A hundred percent. It's the, it's the juxtaposition, I think, of those where you yeah. initially your, your eye looks at the color and you don't, you know, you don't get that vibe, but then you realize how the color is being used with the design and it, it changes, it, it creates, um, a very delightful discomfort. Um, yeah. So yeah, very that's excited for that cease and desist in, a, in the email in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> I <have to> prove it. <laughs> um, yeah. If anything, it gets Tim to follow you on Instagram or something. Yeah. Um, all right. So my number one, um, I think you were talking about how you've done so many covers. You've had a chance to draw kind of like every single thing or experiment with a bunch of stuff. We were talking about previously, uh, we talked about you on our first episode or about Goosebumps, and I was talking about the first uh, book I ever saw, but then I was thinking one of the ones that was the most obscure to me was Calling All Creeps oh. with the kind of like hoodlum raptors, yeah. Um, yeah. which is that one of yours, Sean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, you're a terrible person. It's fine. <laughs> I, I think it's, you got more. I think it's, uh, I think it's really unique and um, I'm a big fan of like the obscure kind of stuff not just a monster not just whatever um but it's you know hoodlum raptor yeah. sort of thing which is really cool so yeah that's, a, that's yeah, gonna be that, yeah that's a that's again that that whole tongue-in-cheek thing where it's just like really you know kid dinosaurs and yeah the other thing that's cool about it that's become you know gone full cycle is the show it to a little kid now to ask them where they're standing they What's never that? saw a phone booth before <laughs> yeah what oh, the yeah. hell is a phone booth why are people you know? outside making a phone call <laughs> yeah it's um it's also That's it's true. this is a perfect example of your art drawing someone into the story because calling all creeps is vague and this yeah. art makes you go what what happens in this book to get me to <laughs> this moment like what could possibly be going on uh, one of my yep. favorite of the books too. Remember that one very well. <laughs> um, All right, Tim. Second, second pick. What are we looking at? Um, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna use Horrorland in my top five, but that's Aha. okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to say about that is that the idea of the monster on the top. I always wanted you to either think it could be real or it was not real and part of the sign. But to your point, that that just didn't seem like a really good carnival to be going to mm -hmm. in the background and like you said there was no uh you know tents shaped like skulls or you know the you know fictitious looking stuff it just looked like a rundown place that just didn't look like uh, anything good was going to happen there so yeah the idea of whether the monster was real or not was up to your interpretation to you is it real or not right <laughs> unless you don't want to break the mystique yeah. <laughs> um I, i'll go with one that i mentioned before um just because I, i've talked about it before because it has all those elements working in it and that's egg monsters from mars nice, uh yeah. i didn't know if it was gonna be a you know as a pencil sketch it didn't have a lot going for it um but the warped perspective really you know made that one that really helped that that image and then you know just to get the color in there and having be able to 
warp the perspective enough to get that egg close up to you in the in the front of the illustration uh, really helped. Absolutely. That was one of the ones where it I was like, what kind of because that's after reading, I had read like several Goosebumps before that, and I knew that Arl Stein liked to have fun. You know, um, he would have a scary moment, turn comedic pretty quick, and then go back to scary. Right. And when I saw that one, I was like, Wait, are these really eggs? Is that what this is going to be? <laughs> I was like, I love the art. Let's see what happens. Um, so, all right. So, is it me? Yeah, it's your turn, Sean. Uh, so, this one, um, I feel like I have to go with it. And it's weird, I think, that I have to go with it because I, out of, in terms of, the design and what's happening in it, it's fairly simplistic compared to your other ones, but you, you're you able to put so much in uh, the face of this character. But uh, the Barking Ghost, I, yeah. it's, yeah, it's one of the ones that I, um, I would find myself, like, no joke, second grade, just sitting on the library floor, like, looking this, this dog in the eyes, um, because it's just, it's terrifying, it's incredibly menacing, and yeah, I don't know. It it always stuck with me. Uh, that's that, that element, though. That's the single element. You got to make that single element stand alone by itself. There's no background. There's no anything. Yep. Uh, what I like about that piece is the secondary light on the side of his nose. So you have the orange red color. That's you know really gives it form. And yep. it's just a, a weird secondary light. And yeah, I didn't even think I I realized that necessarily, but yeah, absolutely. You have the, all the blue light coming from up top, and then just on this one side, there's a uh, you know some orange red light, warm light hitting right there. Hmm. And oh, in love depth, it. love to hear it. <laughs> um, all right, my my second one. I like so in the first uh, episode of this podcast, we talk about some of our favorite Goosebumps books. They're the ones that got us into it. So everyone knows Sean's first two picks because he already said those two in the first one. So sorry, Sean, you already did that. <laughs> I did. Do, yeah, do you did remember I, talking about that? I, I, yeah, well, the, I remember in the talking first about episode, You're like, I love a day at Horrorland. I love and the I love Barking Ghost. Ghost. That I makes sense. Like, That's fine. That um, makes sense. So I'm gonna pick the one that I picked. The first book I remember seeing was The Beast from the East. Um, uh -huh. It's not really a menacing cover or like anything really no. spooky about it, but um, I love the <clears throat> I love the cool tones. I think that's why I like the purple and Kongo creeps. I like the blues and the purples and the beast from the east. Um, yeah, just a cool cool design. Yeah, that, that was, that's one of the few covers that nothing bad is happening in. You yeah, know, yeah. You know, almost every Goosebumps cover, it's you know that shit's going down, and then that one, it's just it's it's way trippier than yeah. all the other goosebumps and um uh yeah that's uh, it's one i like uh, as well um it's again the umbrella shaped trees and the mushrooms yeah everything yeah. else was just uh you know it was definitely all non-threatening but it still fit into the into the grouping i'm yeah. curious did you because everything from the title i mean the title kind of almost alerts to uh to like Dr. Seuss kind of, did you pull from him at all in terms of like umbrella trees or anything like that? Or no, that you know, the, the guy who I pull from, and again, it's, it wasn't the exact pull from him, but it was always that try to try to do things differently is that the, the, the illustrator, Roger Dean, if you've seen any other interviews with me, uh, it's, he's a, somebody who I followed in, you know, religiously as a teenager and wanted my work to be so much like his work. And he's a surreal, you know, fantasy artist, does a lot of landscapes. And I was just trying to dig into my inner Roger Dean on that and just concoct a landscape around that character that was unique. He, that he did sense. the artwork for the band, yes, right? Yes, that's correct. correct. Yep. Okay. I say it, the name sounds familiar, but I, I'm going to have to Google it after. Well, I didn't okay, know that yeah, off the top follow, of my then head. You got to follow. You have to go all the way down the rabbit hole. Okay. And then <laughs> look at his artwork. And then if you haven't seen, and most everybody's seen the movie Avatar, check out the movie Avatar. And you can see why there's been many of us, and I believe there's probably lawsuits pertaining to this as well, that he believed that they, you know, they stole from him. Yeah. And, you know, he wasn't looking for money from them. He just wanted a, an acknowledgement. Yeah. From it, uh, that never came. So, got you. Yeah. Got you. We'll definitely I, look at that. I, I think somebody yeah. said something. It, it was hard <laughs> not to see that stuff. So, 
I think yeah. somebody saw something. That makes sense. That makes All right, sense. Tim, number three pick. Number three pick. Uh, Scarecrow walks at midnight. Ah, almost <laughs> picked. I almost picked that one too. <laughs> so yeah, that the, the idea. So here in New Jersey, as much as uh, people don't know, you know, most people only New Jersey by flying into the you know Newark Airport, and it it's not real pretty around there. But you know, New Jersey's uh, you know uh, tag name or theme is the garden state and there's a lot of you know, farming that's done here and you know we grow a lot of corn here so as a kid at some point you ended up in a cornfield at night and it's freaky and yeah, oh yeah it's it's way disturbing Even. and um the idea of a scarecrow again that there's there's been some great scarecrows over the years but yeah it was fun to concoct one and you know, uh, again, it's a it's a frightening icon, and it's a frightening environment. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. Um, Not only is New Jersey like it has those areas of of farm, but also the drive. So I'm in New York City, and I've driven okay. through Jersey three times now. Driving through Pennsylvania and hitting Jersey before you go into New York is like the most beautiful. 25 minutes of drive like <laughs> north of you know the middle and, of the country and if, like, yeah if you are driving straight out of manhattan and you're taking route 80 uh i'm 45 50 minutes outside the city so okay. i'm in that you know it's lakes and mountains yeah and green. yeah it's it's really it's really nice here the first okay. time i went through i was like this is not new jersey man. this is not the jersey <laughs> well, i know we, yeah we get a bad rap and you know most people either know it from the airport or they know it from you know jersey shore and they think yeah. everybody everybody talks like this <laughs> and uh uh it, the beaches are nice too so that yeah. that's what's cool about the state is that it offers a lot in a very small geographic yeah, location yeah so you can ski you can swim at the beach you know you can hike and you can go to new york city you yeah know, it's it's amazing that's great all right uh, sean number three number three number three uh so this is where because I, I basically knew that this is where i was going to get start getting hung up because a lot of them there's a hundred of them love so many. yeah 100. <laughs> um so i think i think i have to add attack of the jack-o-lanterns um because it's I don't know they they were just so menacing um like in in my eyes I and I feel like I probably out of all of your art uh when I was a kid that I would like redraw and recreate on my own I probably drew this more times than any of the other covers wow that's yeah. cool yeah so um yeah I don't know they're just it's terrifying and I remember they the characters didn't even like super super come in until the late of the like later into the book and i was frustrated because i was like i was so <laughs> obsessed with this image in my head so yeah absolutely attack of the jack-o-lanterns do you think that that cover reminds you of uh of i guess it wouldn't remind trick you of sam from trick-or-treat but the movie trick-or-treat well i think that the a big part of the reason i mean i i've always been into spooky stuff and loved yeah. halloween but a big part of the reason i think that trick or treat resonates with me is probably because of the cover like mm. you know what i mean like a, a long again childhood love like i didn't just see these as like books that i like like th these were pieces of art that i really enjoyed as a kid um so read, you could read <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and well even then like after i had read them i would pull out the books to look at the art the same way you would pull out a concept art book or just an art book in general before you know like i i've looked at the art more times than i've reread um oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, All right. one of the, the the things that sparked it with me is, uh, you know, many years before uh, got a chance to do the Goosebumps books, um, we had, you know, we had costume parties and Halloween parties, and they got bigger and bigger as we got older and got better at organizing things. And they were pretty huge events, you know, where we would rent halls and hundreds of people would come, you pay to get in, and then we had prizes and we had DJ, you know, they got, they got pretty, you know, and they got big as they got bigger and the prizes got better. People tried harder. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, one of the years, you know, I, I spent way less time in my costume than I should have. And I was like, I'm just getting a big pumpkin, carving a hole in the bottom, carving it out. And I'm just going to put a real pumpkin on my head. Yes. 
that is a huge pain in the ass. I bet. That is, it, it smells in there. <laughs> it's heavy. It's you are so isolated because yeah. yeah, you're hearing your breathing. You can't hear what's going on at the party. You're yelling and people mm-hmm. can't hear you. Total, total, total mistake. But you, yeah. but you owned it. I did all night. Yeah. Exactly. All night. <laughs> you I committed to it and said, "This is it. We're going yeah. all the way through." We're Hell yeah! Through. I That's love that. Amazing. All right. Um, with mine, my third uh, round, I'm gonna go with Deep Trouble. Again, I like the cool tones. Um, you talked about having like kind of the singular thing going on, um, and that is really just the hammerhead and the the leg or legs in the water. Um, well, that was the, the human element is always you know that's a nice added touch, and yeah. you know, the hammerhead sharks are. I mean, that again, that's that one and um, werewolf of fever swamp. Mm-hmm. Those are kind of realistic you know like i didn't go crazy on the exaggerations you know they are that is a hammerhead shark and in the the werewolf one that's that's a werewolf where uh deep trouble two that's a mutant goldfish and that one's just totally out of here yeah yeah oh i that the really it's like a big fish with really squished in facial features um real quick not to not to plug but you said deep trouble and i remembered that i had this this is my sketchbook from sixth grade Attack of the Jack Lanterns from sixth grade, Tim. That's pretty uh, good. That's right? Pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> he hasn't gotten then, any better either. So and then, so. yeah, no, this is where we, we peaked. Oh, look the, at that, yeah. And then, nice. dude, I'm telling you, I wasn't lying. You I'm not just kissing the rest. You were yep. all over it. <laughs> but yeah, I, like in my head, as soon as you said it, I was like, that's in my sketchbook. That's right there. So, um, but Perfect. okay, I geeked out. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I don't know. I don't think I have any of my sketchbooks from sixth grade. I um, Sean Sean hoards. So my well also <laughs> my my uh, grandmother. It's not a bad thing. You know, like I am a thrower and I'm glad that uh, you know now that we were able I was smart enough to hang on to all that those sketches that really at the time seemed so you know, I, lack of a better term, it seemed worthless. I'm hanging on to tracing paper sketches. Who mm-hmm. the hell's going to want these things? You know, I'm just doing it. <laughs> I'm, just doing it because I'm going, yeah, I remember work, you know, like I worked on it. You did it. Say that, you know, it shows yeah. effort. You know, maybe there's another idea in there that you can go back to the folders. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, this was Got to remember, this is pre-internet, and you didn't just Google shit, and every image in the whole world was right there yeah. in your eyes. I oh, used yeah. to have to go to the library to look for shit, and yeah. it was way easier to rummage through my own files to go, is there any good ideas in here that I didn't, you know, that I missed? Ah, that makes sense. All right, Tim, fourth round. <laughs> We're wrapping it up almost. The blob that ate everyone. Ah. Oh, that's a good one. Yes, it is. So, that's yeah, a good one. That, that was one again. That's that falls into that same category where, as a pencil sketch, it didn't have a lot going for it. Like, yeah, we everybody understood it, but you know, it looked a whole lot like a baked potato. And uh, until I got all the coloring on there and, and it gave it its flesh tones and veins and everything else, that it turned into something, you know, again. A little silly, but still frightening enough. Oh, terrifying! I'm I'm curious. Uh, I don't think we even talked about it, but I know I've watched some of your interviews, and you're not like a huge horror movie guy, right? No. You like some. Did you happen to watch like the Blob, either the original or the remake, or anything for that? Um, no, I, I. Well, I'm sure I saw the original Blob, and mm-hmm. you know, again, that was you know a, a lot of years ago, and it wasn't as. Uh, it, it, the effects weren't great. So, uh, no, I, you know, other than, you know, the slappy, cause it's a ventriloquist dummy and, you know, the, mm-hmm. you saw those, like where the, I'm, I really had to lean into that because that's what a ventriloquist dummy is. Yeah. And most of the stuff I'm, I'm, you know, I didn't go, Oh, well, I'm werewolf of fever swamp. Let me go watch the werewolf movie. Got or, you. You know, so no. Uh, and again, uh, you know, I like you said, you've heard of me on other interviews. If I was your guy's age when Goosebumps came out, I probably wouldn't have even picked the books up. I would have been too scared. 
And uh, I, I was, I am the most unlikely candidate to be <laughs> creating horror stuff because at, when I was young, I couldn't, I couldn't, I was the guy who called his mom to come and get him at the movie yeah. because I couldn't sit through it. That's so funny. And that's why our show is called Mostly Horror. Yeah, movie mostly. Night. <laughs> we wrap in, we wrap in everyone. Yep. All right, Sean, number Me. four. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to go with, uh, I was okay. I'll say that after. I'm gonna pick um, "Welcome to Camp Nightmare" uh, because you the the vibe, just the energy that you create with this one is terrifying. I think this is probably one of the scariest of all the covers. Um, it's and I love that I can't see the monster. That's probably like my favorite thing. You can just kind of just kind of get him, you know, and it forces me to imagine what this thing is. Um, and yeah, the, your use of greens, like uh, this is a perfect example of the crazy color schemes that you pick. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's iconic and randomly pops into my head and I will have to go get my book and, and look at it sometimes. So hundred <laughs> percent. Welcome to camp, not camp nightmare. That's a good one. Um, my fourth, I'm going to go with horror at camp jelly jam. Ah. Another, another camp one. That's the is that the guy so far? Yeah. It's the weird yeah. dude. Just like, yep. like grinning kind of, um, I think that out of all the camp ones is just like a weird, he has like a tight fitting, like camp jelly jam shirt mm-hmm. on too. And it's just like, I also love the, I love the, purple tones. Up and, you know, it has yep. you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to You got to get yourself a copy of uh, that old book. It came from New Jersey. I know it's hard to find because in there I talk about having, you know, shooting photographic reference Mm-hmm. or some of the you know the people that are in the, the stories and that's me posing for that nice really it's, it's my smile i have my pants hiked up i exaggerate i didn't everything. mean to talk shit about yeah, it sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it's great i, I love it because yeah uh because i had done there's an you'll see it in when the book comes out there's some of the original sketches the guy was very cartoony and you know like it it wasn't very threatening, but then when I grabbed me and exaggerated me, uh, and it's that stupid smile, and you know, that's terrifying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You nailed it. That makes me so much. Ha- I'm going to think about that now when I look at it. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. All right. Number five, Tim. Got to round up the team. Got to kind of come up with another one. Um. All right. Here's a random one. Bad hair right. day. Mm. Ooh, that's a good one yeah 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 so again you know magicians hat rabbits rabbits aren't scary rabbits are as cute as possible but uh tried to tweak them as best i could you know gave the big exaggerated head and then the other thing that became kind of a uh you know a staple in the goosebumps is the slack jaw Mm-hmm. exaggerating the draw and dropping it down and i used it again in that particular one as well just to give him the, the more horrific look yeah yeah um i'm honestly surprised i didn't immediately throw that one on my list because <laughs> while being a huge goosebump nerd i was also really into magic growing up so that one <laughs> always stuck with me yeah um i am a nerd <laughs> <laughs> okay oh no i wrote that in steve's spot okay steve All right, Sean, number is- five Yep. Okay. Okay. It sucks because there's just so many to pick from. And I, I'm going to pick this one. I think I would have picked shocker, but we talked a lot about it. Um, and I, I love that art, but I want to also mention this one, um, how to kill a monster. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And again, your color scheme and the fact that you don't show me what it looks like. It used to drive me nuts. I was like, all that I get are these hands and it, it, you were really good at just forcing us to use our imagination sometimes. And I think that it's really interesting to have these, these pink colors on the outside and, and it, you know, it looks nice and, and harmless, but then as soon as like in this little area, whatever's in that room is terrifying. It's, it's a much darker, scarier feel. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of my favorites. And the skeleton key is cool too. The yeah. Little, I was about to little, say the key. little detail. Of yeah. That. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And then my last one um, is not, I mean, I know that there's a lot to choose from, from the originals. It's not part of the original 63 because um, the 
the story that I remember the most because I had a cat that looked just like it is Cry of the Cat, the Ooh. first, the first uh, Goosebumps 2000. Yeah. Um, again, nothing like forced perspective or really colorful or anything like that, but um, Rip the cat, I still remember his name, <laughs> um, looked just like my cat at the time. And you somehow knew, you know, used my cat as reference for that one. And it freaked me out. So um, that one will always stay with me. And the story, the story is awesome too. Um, so that's forever going to be, forever, forever going to be in my top five. So, yeah. well, these were great teams. Uh, yeah. Tim, thank you endlessly. We've had you for way longer than we said we were yeah. going to. So, I'm so sorry. Like you said, it's, uh, this is, you know, I like talking about it as much as you guys do. Cool. Awesome, man. Yeah, we, we appreciate yeah. it. Um, I know you were talking about doing cons and that sort of stuff. Hopefully when the world gets back to normal a little bit, we'll be able to come say what's up. Um, for anyone listening, we talked about, you know, the the donations to the food drive um, by purchasing some posters off of your website. Is Do it. it. Uh, is it Tim Jacobus Studios or just Jacobus Studios? If, 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 if it's jacobusstudios.com, but if you write in timjacobus.com, it'll force you there. So. Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. So however it, whatever it takes, you know, get a poster, donate yep. some money to people in need right now. It's very important. Um, yep. Tim, thank you again. Can't say Thank you enough. so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> See you.